Okay, Be'ezrat Hashem. So, in our last shiur, we explained the two Pesukim, Pasuk Chet and Pasuk Tet, right? In, obviously in, uh, in uh, Perik Bet, of, uh, according, according to the Gaon Vilna. And we saw tremendous, very interesting structures in the level of Ashgaha uh, and presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and interaction with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and how a, present, a person can transite, transit, right? From one part, one world to another, one dimension to another, and how his actions impact uh, the influence of time on his behavior and his productivity. The Malbim addresses the same, the same subject when he learns these two Pesukim. As we know, according to the Malbim, we start a new Nevoah, putting back things in perspective. According to the Malbim, this is not a very highly spiritual prophecy, okay? The second prophecy of Shalomo. It's more, and, and for this specific reason, Shalomo will not be attacked by the Benot Yerushalayim, by the Klippot. Um, so we're starting something fresh. According to the Malbim, we're starting something fresh. And he says the, follow, the following. So we know, Kol Dodi, the voice of my beloved, in Ezeba, it's coming. Medaleg Ale Arim, leaps over the mountain, Mekapes jumps over the hills. Dome Dodi Litzvi, right? Just so that, my Dodi, my beloved, is compared to the deer, or to the ram. He stands behind the kotel, behind the wall, overlooks, right, through the window, looks in the cracks, right, sees through the crack what's going on inside the house. That's basic translation, obviously. Uh, we need to understand. So, to the difference of the of the Gami Vilna, uh, the Malbim will zoom in, and it's something that's very found in the Malbim versus the Gaon. The Malbim is very practical in the message taught to men and for men to implement in his routine in his life versus the Gaon that has more of a, a general and broader teachings on a much higher level. So uh, according to the Gaon, we find a lot of times that he addresses teachings that are impactful on the entire creation. It's more of a panoramic view of things, panoramic teachings versus the Malbim that keeps on zooming in on the responsibility brought through the Torah from HaKadosh Baruch Hu on men. So the Malbim shies away from the, the transitional uh, factor or uh, uh, ways a man will face in different worlds, like for, for, like the Gaon, for example, like from Olam Azeh to Olam Abba, Olam Abba, and he dives in in the call. According to the to the to the Malbim, the call is really the subject here. Call Dodi, the call Dodi Hinezeva. So there's a voice that's being heard that is coming. So he's saying there is there is two entities here. There is someone that is expressing right that voice, that sound. And there is someone listening to the sound, right? When you hear a sound, that means that you're the receiver, but there's someone giving the sound. Right? So Kol Dodi, the, song, the sound comes from the Dodi. And he says, it, this is the sound that comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The message, the divine message that is being constantly, constantly sent from Hashem to creation. Yes. Before you said that, uh, we said that this is not prophetic. Is he we with his own thoughts? Correct. So I don't get it. So his own thoughts 
are sent from Hashem or are his thoughts? Very good. We're going to get to that. Well, one second, one second, one second. Bravo, bravo. Kol Dodi, Kol Dodi, as of right now, is the voice of Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu speaks to creation. And if you, if, if you paid attention to the word that I used, I said I, 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 the voice of Hashem, right, is being spread upon creation, right? So God speaks to the creation all the time. Well, a prophecy is God speaking to a specific individual, right? Now we're not talking about the specific voice that comes from God to a prophet, but the voice that God shares with the creation. Okay? It's almost like the Ashgachan, and we will get to that in a second. And it's, 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 it's good that you're addressing it because it just makes the point even clearer. We'll see that Hashem, uh, I mean, we addressed that in the past, but here we'll see it clearly how a Kadosh Baruch Hu has Ashgacha, looks over and cares for humanity, creation, people on different levels, right? We know, we, I think we spoke about the circular Ashgacha versus the linear Ashgacha. Kol Dodi Hinezeba. We're talking about uh, the circular Ashgacha. It's coming. It's coming. Hine Zeba. Zeba. We are expecting all the time, okay, a, 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 a transmission of information, of willpower, of the divine uh, uh, Koach intervention at all times. Okay, but but as it's coming down, we will see that it has different impact. So think about it. It's like it's almost like you're you have a flow of water that's coming, okay, and that's pouring down with different types of vessels to absorb that that water. So you're gonna have small vessels. You're gonna have hollow vessels, you're going to have wide vessels, and depending on the vessel, you will absorb different quantities of water, or not. If you have a, if you have a tube, the water will go through and just continue to come down. Yeah? Kol Dodi, the voice of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Kol, the Kol. The hashgacha of Hashem's Baruch Hu. That's what. That's how the 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 Malbim wants to learn the definition of call. He says comes abundantly. Now, maybe it's time to uh, to address. Uh, I'm going to open a parenthesis and I'm going to close it, but it's a fundamental learning. Something very 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 important to learn in, uh, in the concept of tefillah. I think, uh, you know, I'm, re I'm very repetitive, I'm sorry, but I live based on those, those, those teachings, yes. Okay. So there is, there, there is a, uh, a, a thought or some teachings or some chachamim uh, learn or want to believe, and it's, it's one opinion, obviously, that when you pray, you, it's, a, it's a request. You ask Hashem for something. Hashem decides whether your request should be granted or not. And then he decides when, when, whether or not to answer you. And if he answers whether to grant you your request or not. Okay? Pray. You go to Hashem, please give me this. Please give me that. Please, Hashem, fix this. Please, Hashem, fix that. And apparently, there's a, Hashem sits on his big throne. And he listens to all these requests. And he says, this one, yes, this one, no, this one, later, this one, we're not going to answer, this one. And Yosheb al okay, very busy with all the requests. Okay, that's one school of thought. Rabbeinu Hizdai Mikraskas. Rabbeinu Hizdai Mikraskas is the... Student of the Ran and the teacher of the Nimuke Yosef. 
he was a tremendous Kabbalist, um, tremendous, tremendous Kabbalist. And he, he emulated the teachings of the Rambam and disagreed on a lot of them when it came to a, uh, a difference between the Rambam's philosophy and Kabbalah. So he, he shows many differences between what the Rambam teaches you and what the Kabbalah teaches you, okay? The Ran, you know that Rabbeinu Nisi was a tremendous Kabbalist also. Uh, so he, he, he followed, he follows the teaching of, uh, of uh, Talmud Aran, of, of the Ran. Okay, so he says something amazing. He says, the tefillah is not just a request. You send a letter and expect something to come back. He said Hashem de facto showers upon creation constant abundance of beracha. Every moment of the day, of the night, showers the world with crazy abundance of beracha, crazy abundance of beracha, all the time. The tefillah is the bucket you bring out to absorb the beracha. This is why he says we never pray for personal things. We pray in general. But the fact that you are showing that you, you need it, you need something, is basically the needy. What does the needy do? He extends his arm asking for something, right? The needy extends out. The tefillah is extending your bucket to receive your beracha. Depending on your actions, depending on your deeds, depending on your integrity, your bucket is hollow, solid, clean, dirty, wide, tall, big, small, depending on that. And that's how you connect to the beracha of HaKadosh Baruch Hu through the tefillah. Good? So, according to Chachme Asod, according to Rabbeinu Hizdai Mikraskas, and, and, and by the way, it's a Rambam in Sefer HaMore, uh, that there is de facto blessing upon creation. Okay? There is. Yes. But if there would be no de facto blessing all the time, how people would live that we don't do when they don't do tefillah? They are receiving. Well, who puts a. Puts a, puts a but uh, he's a sending every day. If not, the person would not live. Well, he puts a, 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 a. No. First of all, you could say that he puts a system in place and forgets about it. Or you could say that he controls every millisecond. And if that's the case, then your tefillah doesn't really change anything because he controls everything. So when you make your tefillah, you're actually making a request, but the request doesn't mean it's going, you know, it's, it, God has a plan. And if it's not part of the plan, he's going to throw it out. So what's the point of prayer, according to them? What? So, so in, in their point of view, what's the point of praying? Oh, so the point of praying is to show dependence. To show dependence. No. Good. No, no, please. None of the three understood, I think. What? Again. <laughs> you are the. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Again, Hashem, Hashem, according to Rabbeinu Chizda Mikraskes, do you, Rabbeinu Chizda, you understand or you don't? Resume. Okay. There is, there is three ways of looking at creation of Ashgaha. Okay? One way, God created the world, right? Put a system in place and forget it. All right? Forget it. That's it. Another way, and depending on how you connect to him, he connects to you. Lecha ora, that's the Rambam. Right? The Rambam said he puts a system in place. He couldn't care less what happens in the system. Which cat eats which, eat which mouse? We spoke about this, right? Yeah. And the only thing he cares about is okay, if you invite me, I'm here, right? We spoke about this at length. Yeah. That's the Rambam. That's the Rambam. Then you have Rabbi Nuhiz Daimikaskis that says Hashem showers abundance all the time. Okay, what the Rambam calls a system in place really means it's an abundance of beracha, abundance of beracha. 
And all you have to do is take from that beracha. God is not a good guy or a bad guy. And he's not like this judge that sits and decides who he will grant today uh, an audience who, and who he will reject. No, he sends bracha to everybody. Everyone. It's up to you to take or not. Or what's the difference between the first one that also depends on your actions? <laughs> Good. Okay. The, the, the Rambam did not connect the Ashgacha Klalit and the Ashgacha Pratit. He says it's two different systems. Okay? According to Rabbi Nuchizay Mikraskis, it's one system. The Ashgacha Klalit is in order to get to the Ashgacha Pratit. No? No, it's a whole subject. How can you separate Klali from Pratit? Very simple. In the Klali, okay, Hashem put, a, put rules and regulations in place, and that's it. Pratit, if you think about me, I'm here. You don't think about me, I'm not here. That is like disconnecting the Jewish uh, person from Klali, from right. everyone. Why? Because if I do something, it affects everyone. For sure it affects. So it, it affects the rules and regulations of everyone, what they do. You cannot separate them. But from a different system, not because God controls it, or not because he looks at it, simply because of the butterfly effect. Ah, okay. That has nothing to do with God, right? In quote. He has to do with God's decision to put a system in place. You play the game, you get hurt, you get hurt, you don't get hurt, you don't get hurt. Yeah, right? That's fine? Okay. According to Rabbeinu Chizai Mikraskes, there is in that ecosystem, okay, uh, what the Rambam calls a system in place, okay, the, 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 the Rabbeinu Chizai wants to say that it's more than that. It's an abundance of Beracha, right? That's not only a system, but that's here for man to tap into. So there is a, a higher exposure of divinity in that system that Hashem put in place. Not just for the ecosystem to exist, but for man to be able to tap into that Beracha and benefit from it. How does a person does that? Through tefillah. Okay? It's a nuance, but you need to understand it because it's, it's, it's a major difference. Difference is clear. Okay, the difference. Is clear. And then you have the, 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 then you have the Baal Shem Tov that we all know, that Hashem control everything. And there is, it's not, there's no difference between Ashgacha Klalit, Ashgacha Prati. There's only one Ashgacha. Okay. And basically the Tefillah is only a point of reference to God. Okay. Do you put everything back into a, a point of origin or not? If you, if you're connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then you, you recognize that everything comes from him. And if you don't, you're lost, you're, you're lost, right? That's, but that's the, that's where the difference happens. This is the difference between Tefillah and Avodat Hashem and not. Recognizing God as a king and as your master versus. But under the Baal Shem Tov, if Hashem controls everything and somebody didn't pray, would that be of Hashem's control? I don't, I cannot answer that question. I thought the Baal Shem Tov is too high of a, of a, of a thought for me to, uh, it's too deep. I, I'm not there yet. Okay. So, I'm not there yet uh, because it's yes, but it's a, it's. I understand. Let's focus on the guy. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're good. We're good. Yes. I think we're good. I close the parenthesis. Okay. The malbim, the malbim, which is, uh, which is based on a lot of Kabbalah, like more, more like, like the gaon or like that. Okay, brings addresses the call, the call the origin of the call as that abundance of Shefa, the, that abundance of Beracha coming and being showered upon the creation. The call Dodi, 
the call of my dodi, the call of Akadosh Baruch the abundance of Akadosh, in Nezeba. You know what? It's coming. And as it's coming down, okay, it will start shaping itself, right? And becoming more and more structured and more and more specific and more and more targeted. Good? Good. Andy, you're with us today? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm reading okay. the book. Okay. So now, now the, the Malbim will break down, okay, into five, the different transition of that call, that original call Dodi in creation. So the call Dodi, that's why it's very important that the call Dodi is this original Shefa coming down, and then it will start breaking down into different, it will translate and transform itself in different ways. Are one of the ways the, the purest form and it, and it, and it stays from we'll get where there. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get, to, we'll get to it. So, Medaleg, the first one is Medaleg al Heharim. Medaleg al Heharim, the one that, that, that leaps over the mountain. Says the Malvim, the mountain is a very high point, right? The definition is of a mountain. It's something that rises above the level of the ground, right? And differentiates itself by its height. Medaleg, when you leap over, that means you're above the mountain. He says, this is the, the level of Ashgaha that is Shmeimit. This is the level of Ashgaha that come that uh, of a person that is above the mountain, people that are on a very, 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 very high level. It's the Shekhinah at that point is still very, very, very high and very concentrated and almost very un, almost untouchable by humans right because humans don't live on top of the mountains they live in the hills they live on earth right in the bottom they don't live on top but sometimes you have people that go on top of the mountain and have this ability to benefit from that shekhinah from that still very intense revelation of akadosh Baruch Hu beracha, but yet very difficult to connect to who did that? Moshe Rabbeinu did it. He went up the mountain. So he, he, he didn't wait for the Shekhinah to come down, for the blessing to come all the way down. He went, he went all the way up to the mountain to grasp it and take it and, and bring it down. Good? And we find that Shemuel Navi, Eliyahu Navi, they lived in the mountains. They were the ones that were always rising up. So the mountain really represents uh, the, the differentiation a person creates between mundaneity, between the world of people, the world of, of physicality, and the remote place in the heights. That which only is, which is how they can actually rise. Which is how they grab Hashem Beracha. Which is which is where you can grab the most, the intense version of the, 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 the general beracha Hashem sends upon creation. And, and how, does, how, do you, how, do you, how are you able to climb over the mountain? How, by what means? Oh, so, so what, what is the Avodat Hashem, right? The Avodat Hashem, the, the fact that you separate yourself from the regular people, the fact that you, uh, what, what's a mountain? A mountain, it's something that's impulsive, right? It's something that is very high. It's something that is very strong. It's something that is very anchored. A mountain don't, doesn't move. A mountain is made of rock. A mountain separates itself, separates itself, okay? A person that is like a mountain, a person that has actions like a mountain, he separates himself from the mundanity. He's not, for, he's not part of everybody. He's very anchored, very solid, 
you know, very high expectations of himself, very high level of intellectualism, of Yerat Shamayim. You rise yourself to become a mountain. Right, so, so... The Gedole Olam, the Chachamim are called mountains. Yeah, I'm trying to different, differentiate between the Gaons, uh, which is through Ahava and through and through. Oh no, wait, wait, wait! It's diff it's a different angle. Okay. Don't, 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 don't. It's different angles because one is talking about transitional process versus one that is talking about a, a, more of a linear process. It's more of an interaction between you and Hashem versus your journey in your in in the different steps of your life. Okay. Go on the journey. Yeah. The gown is more of that journey, and depending on how you're connected to Akadosh Baruch Hu, that journey goes faster or, 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 or slower. They could kind of work together. They do work together. It's just from different angles. I got it. So this is the first level. It's the first revelation of this Shefa, of this Berachah of Akadosh Baruch Hu, which means the more, the more you differentiate yourself, the more you elevate yourself, the more the quality of the beracha you get is pure, right? And the more that beracha impacts a larger amount of people because it's still condensed, it's still intense. So it's not definite specifically to you. It didn't have to come and dilute, 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 dilute until it comes to your door. Yes. Um, I don't know if the question is correct or not, but in Chokhmah uh, Dat, you said that when uh, you start to connect each time more, in the same way or even more, also comes um, the, the, I don't know, the, the test and the difficulty. Yes. And uh, the Yetzirah, sorry. You yes. said that the Yetzirah also gets. So you are bringing Beracha and you are bringing Yetzirah. You are bringing Absolutely. both. Yeah, this is why the Yetzirah is called a mountain and the Talmud Chacham is called a mountain. <laughs> because so, they're both. It, listen, but it, it's very We are logical. praying to bring Yetzirah? Very logical. Think about it. If you would, if by doing good deeds, you would detach yourself from the Yetzirah, at one point, there's no more Yetzirah. So at one point, it's no longer a choice. But you are not winning the huh? war. You are not like winning the war. If, if you get bigger and the Yetzirah gets bigger and you get bigger, it's like the and match is always... Uh, no, that's not true. You go to tie break every game. Yeah, no, it's not true. Andy, 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 you, you mentioned tennis, right? Yeah. The, better you get, the better you get at tennis, right? So if you have a if you have a good forehand and you miss four shots, right? It's okay, but if you get better and now you miss one shot, it's not okay because you got better. So the expectations rise as you get better. Oh, yeah, I I get that, but you get one guy inside you that he's telling you you are the worst. You don't know how to play tennis. You have to go home. <laughs> what you did, you came here. Uh, the other one is going to win you. No, but then <laughs> and, and, there is a difference between, no, 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 uh, Andy, you're, there's always a Yetzirah at your level. But the Yetzirah that you beat, okay, you beat him. When you grow, the old Yetzirah is no longer a Yetzirah. Uh. Right? So as you grow, you kill Yetzirah. It's just that there is a new uh. form at that level, right? Okay. You do win. So eventually you win. No, you for sure you win. But Hashem cannot not put you in a place where you have to, you have, you have to make a choice to make. That's part of the Chet of Adam Arishon, whatever. We don't go back to that. But at the end, that's what it is. So, right? so but the ones that are below, finish. You graduated them. It's finished. Okay. Good? Good. Thank you. Okay. So, so very important again just to, uh, to repeat what I just said, the more you elevate yourself, the bigger and the more pure the beracha is, and the more pure and bigger the beracha is, and higher the beracha is, the more 
the, the more universal that, that beracha is, which means you can use this beracha and apply it on more and more and more people. You are more and more impactful. Who do we see that from? Again, Moshe Rabbeinu. What did he bring down? He brought a Torah, a Torah that the most complicated people in the, in the history of humanity can comply to. Oh, wow. And it's funny because Hashem had the Torah waiting for us, but Moshe had to go up on the mountain to go get it. That's right. So that's the Kol Dodi is the Beracha coming down. But as it goes down, 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 okay, it becomes Avram Avinu, Yitzhak Avinu, Yaakov Avinu, very, very focused, right? The Beracha of Yaakov is Yaakov. It's not Avram. The Beracha of Avram is Avram. It's not Yitzhak, right? Moshe, Moshe, Isha Elohim. No, no, no. He didn't wait for the Beracha to come to him. He went all the way to the mountain, took that Beracha, connected to that Beracha, but because it's still on the top of the mountain, it's universal, and he brought it down. And the Re'aya that it's universal, HaKadosh Baruch Hu took the Torah and went to the Goim before he went to Am Israel and told them, do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Now, the fact that they asked the question, okay, they set themselves a failure. So Hashem reacted to their own question. Oh, what's in there? Oh, you want to hear what's in there? Let me tell you what you don't want to hear. That's a different problem. But if they would not have asked the question, the Torah would have been good for them. The Torah also applies to all the goyim in terms of the midot, right? The values of the Torah is universal. So again, you see that, do you see that dimension? You see that dimension, good? So the higher you elevate yourself, the more impactful your beracha is. The more you are low, even if you benefit from that beracha, that beracha will be more specific, becomes more and more specific to you and your kind. Good? Good. Which is a tremendous difference, <laughs> tremendous difference if you want to be impactful and influential in your life. Good? Clear. By the way, by the way, this is why all the Gedole Olam, all the big Talmidei Chachamim Tzaddikim, right? They have answers for all types of people. Right. Think about it, right? You went to Chacham Ovadia, to Baba Saleh, to Rab Chaim Kanievsky, to the Stipele. You, you think you only had people from Benebra coming to talk, to talk to them? Or you only had people, uh, Iraqi or Sephardim coming to Chacham Ovadia, talking to him, to Baba Saleh? No, you had people from all over the world coming with all types of questions. And you know what? He had the answers for everybody. He had Berachah for everybody. Why? Because he was rising up. Because he was on top. He didn't wait for the Berachah to come to them. So... A benefit, a benefit of uprising ourselves and growing up is that we become now more of a source of blessing and wisdom to a larger amount of people. But, but you can transfer that beracha to other people once you're on that level? Lamalo, through the Torah, through the wisdom, through the knowledge, through the, the advice, like through the behavior, can... for sure, for sure. Moshe Rabbeinu attended all Klal Israel, although uh, until Yitro came and said, hey, let's break it down to make it more efficient. Moshe Rabbeinu was ready for all, all Am Israel. Moshe Rabbeinu can get Klal Israel. He's compared to all Am Israel. How is that possible? Because he, ro he rose. He stood on top of the mountain. Rob, but he rose and, and he had the intensity that he, that he brought down, but he almost expected B'nai Israel to understand his intensity or, or it translates into their into their understanding. Well, for some it translated, from others it didn't. But that's already not his issue. That's the issue of the people and how much they want to connect to that. Yeah, right? but the fact that they question the fact that they questioned it is almost no. You know, Israel didn't question the Erev Rav question. The Erev Rav question. Am Israel didn't. Right? The Avodah Zara, the Mechule, that, that was done by the Erev Rav. Ra, let me ask you a question. Uh, so if we're talking about that, and you think about Shilamo HaMelech, who was the wisest, so to speak, right? But it feels like he was more influential to future generations than his own generation in terms of helping people, or is it, I'm, I'm missing part of the story? It's that the, the timing of the influence is irrelevant. Moshe Rabbeinu, or all the Nevi'im, 
they're compounded, right? They've, Moshe Rabbeinu has been more influential on people after his generation than people on his generation. Think about it. How many tens of millions of Jews came after his time? Right. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is this is one benefit, very high level, but yeah, of the beracha, the beracha, the and the the general beracha. Okay, which now reflects to what the Malbim said has nothing to do with Hashem talking to Moshe personally. No, 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 no. It's Hashem is talking to the, the entire creation. Ah, ah. Which, by the way, in order to tap into that, 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 that blessing, you need a tremendous amount of anava because the challenge you get by elevating yourself as a mountain with ga'ava is tremendous. Like the more you rise up, and the more you can look at down at people, right? So you need to have constant anava, constant humility. Now, and number two, you need to have to be humble enough to connect to a beracha that's not yours. It's not directed towards you. And by 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 embracing that universal beracha, that's how you become impactful universally. The first thing that you said of Anava is what happened to Shimon Bar Yochai when he went out and he saw someone and he killed him. He could not understand because that happened. Correct. 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 It's very difficult. Nahon. It is. It is. It is. Uh, refer to Shiro uh, Kinyana Daat. The last Shiro Kinyana Daat. I think uh, I don't remember which number, but anyway. The last year on Kinyan Adat. I addressed that specific point of, of uh, the challenge of Anava and the difference between Moshe Rabenu and Bilam. Okay. Um, so, so this is this is Medaleg Alearim. After that, you have Mekapetz Ala Gevaot. What is Mekapetz Ala Gevaot? He says, Kfitza. The kfitza, you jump over the hill, right? You jump over the hill, but he's not focusing now on the one foot versus the two feet in the air. He's, he's focusing on the uh, on the on the hill. He says, when you when you jump over the, the when the beracha right jumps over a hill, what happens is that the beracha fills up, right? It it's it stands up in, in, in the in the mountain and then it fills up the hills. Okay, he says this is the 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 beracha of Hakadosh Baruch Hu that comes and fills the entire creation, comes down 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 and starts spreading and spreading and and expanding and expanding and filling everything, all the space possible. And he explains. So now it's the second type, right? And he's going to bring that type and break it down. And we're going to see. Okay. So he says that, that okay, so one, one beracha is the beracha that you have to go get. The other beracha is the beracha that comes to you. That comes to you. That's brought all the way to your door. And he said, Dome dodi litzvi ole ayyalim. He says, when the beracha comes down, meaning when you wait for the beracha to come down, there is two ways for the ashgacha to impact a person. You have the ashgacha that looks like the tzvi, like the ram, like the deer. And then you have the, the Ashgacha that behaves like the ram. What is the difference between the two? It says the following. It says the, the Tzvi, the deer, when it, the, the Tzvi and the Ayel, the, the deer and the ram, both, when they run, they run circular. 
Chachamim teach us that when they run, they're going to go, they're going to run, you're going to, but if you look at the way they run, they go around to come back to their own place. Right? So, so, so he says, but there's a difference between the two. He says, the deer, when he runs, he always runs looking back. He runs, but he looks back because he needs to see what's happening, where he has to get back. The ram only looks forward. And he gets back to the same place. He says, he says, there, these are the two difference between, between uh, this is the two types of Ashgaha Pratit when, when the Beracha comes down, when the Ashgaha comes down. You have a type of people, the type of Ashgaha that a person, a person by, by his Avodah, when he works, he always, he always look to bring back what he's learning, what he's teaching, his actions to a, to a point of origin, to a reasoning, to a purpose. You look back, okay, I'm doing this, but for what? What is the purpose of that? What do I get from it? What do I learn from this, right? There's always bringing it back to something bigger, something higher. This behavior, which is the behavior of the tzvi, the behavior of the deer creates creates an ashgacha, a, a, a protection or an interaction from Hashem that will go through the intellect. Because if you try to find the reasoning or the 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 the, the purpose of something, is in order to go back to the root. To go back to Akadosh Baruch Hu, you're always trying to bring back your the today to the its origin. Okay, we spoke about the Ehad, how you, the, you, you have to be able to take something that is separated, separated and bring it back to its origin, which is Ehad. That behavior, that approach gives men or gives Akadosh Baruch Hu Kivyafol the opportunity to shine his wisdom through the intellect of a person. You looking for me, intellectually, I will bring you the tools to find me. Very, very deep, very deep, very, very deep. Meaning if you want to see Akadosh or understand Kivyachol Akadosh Baruch Hu intellectually by always finding a meaning or a purpose or a root of something, if this is your approach, Hashem will give you that ability to find that root, to find that purpose, to find that, that essence. Yeah. You're getting, you know, is there a problem? No, we get it. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. That's, that's the tzivi. However, if you're like the ayal, the ayal also at the end will get back to the place. He knows, he knows, you know, there's a, there's a point of origin, he knows. So, but he always, he goes forward. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, okay, you want to go forward? No problem. I will give you Ashgaha that will allow you to go forward. Klalit, I will clean the path for you. I will ease the path for you. I will put things in perspective, in, in, I will reorganize your dy daily dynamic so that you can keep on running and end up in my place. But I will, it will happen around you, not within you. Here we find a tremendous difference between the, the Hashem's getting involvement through the intellect of the person versus Hashem's involvement in the life of a person. The tzvi, the, 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 the deer cares so much about where he was that he always looks behind. He always look where, where, from the point he left. Doesn't matter how much he runs, he keeps on looking behind. Versus the ayil, the ram that keeps on running. He knows, he knows. I know, I know where I've, I've been. I know my avot akedoshim. I know my grandfather was, was a great man. I know the Avram Yitzchak. I know, I know, I know. And you know what? I'll get back there. I'll, I'll do a full circle. But I'm not attached to that point. I'm not, I'm not looking 
to get back there. I'm not looking for a point of reference all the time. So if you're not looking for it, because who doesn't need to reveal himself through that? You need so to he will help you get back to where you need to get without getting getting inside your essence, getting inside your 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 uh, your intellectual abilities. It's that introspection. What do you mean? You have to constantly. It's like we said with the Echad, when, when we had the two eyes, it's, it's seeing out, the outlook, but also the introspection and seeing it together, meaning you have to reflect on everything that you see in order to find that orange and to find Hashem in it. Oh, so if exactly. So if this is your purpose and in every situation that you're in, what Hashem showing me, what Akalaj who is asking from me? What does he what does he expect from me? What Hashem is telling me right now? What am what is what am I supposed to learn? So if this is your approach, you're always running, you're running, but you know what? You're always looking at Hashem. Okay, where did I start? What, what where does Hashem want me? Right? When somebody, when you separate yourself with somebody that you love, okay, you turn back to see how far they are. You turn back, you turn back, you turn back. Eh, you don't care about the guy, you turn and you go, finish. <laughs> you know you're there. If you care, if you yeah. care. The, I, I think the ironic point of what we're saying is, is that you know a very secular uh you know idea is that you should you know always look forward and you never shouldn't look, look back. back and never look back. And it's amazing how wildly different the perspectives are and how incredible. Well, you don't have to look I don't know but whatever the but this is Look back for what I don't know, but here it's uh, the point of reference to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Bring back everything to Hashem. Exactly. Find its root. Find I think it's purpose. connecting back and, and that's focus. right. You that's know, right. It's less about like actually you know looking like this as you're running. It's more about connecting your origin to where you're going. That approach opens a pipeline of 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 abundance of rachal. The koldodi, an abundance of koldodi in your intellect. Suddenly, you think with Hashem. You understand how powerful that is? Suddenly, you know, the clarity comes from Akadosh Baruch Hu. Forget about things that just happen easily around you. Right. Different. And if, right. Different. And, and if we think about, you know, if we have the the emuna and the understanding that. Hashem is abundant in kindness, which we read every day in our tefillah, and everything he does for us is out of kindness, then we realize, like you said, that everything that's put in front of us is simply for us to reach our full potential. So if you just simply connect your origin, which is the emunah, that everything Hashem does is perfect to what you're seeing, then you connect it. Exactly. That's, exa that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Okay. So now we are two, that is really three, right? We have medale galearim, and then we have mekapet ala gevaot that is broken into two. Okay. Between which two? Intellect and and the deer and the ram. Is there? That's that's for the master. It's for the rab. Well, is is the intensity is the intensity of the beracha different between the ram and the deer? Absolutely. Obviously, the, the, the deer you is it's more intense. Bevadai. Bevadai. It. Think, think about it. Think about it. Is It's or you lack clarity, but you have uh, anan around you that clears up everything for you to go versus an, a clarity inside where you don't need any outside intervention and you know exactly how to go. Right. It's navigation versus being the uh, computer. Right. Yeah. Good? Yes, perfect. Okay. So again, we're, we're two, that is three, right? Good. Now, now the third point. Now we finish the first Pasuk, Pasuk Chet, not Pasuk Tet. Pasuk Tet, now, if you think about it, so even within, within the Ashgacha Pratit, right? Within the Ashgacha Pratit, we have three different verticals. There is three ways Akadosh Baruch Hu will interact with us. Okay? 
Hinezé, Omed, Domé Dodi, les yeux, on les fait à l'histoire. Hinezé, Omed, Ahar, Kotlenu. The Kotel, the Kotel is the, the, like we say, it's the, the walls outside of the house. Right? It says to Malbim, this is the body. It's the body, it's physicality. It's the bones of the house, what keeps the building together. Yeah, the Kotel, the Kotalim, the walls. The walls. One of the Ashgaha Kadosh Bahu has is physical Ashgaha. He looks after the body, he looks after materialism, he looks after health, he looks after everything that has to be with is to do with physicality. But he is not uh, he's not inside yet the house. He's not inside the house. A har kotlen outside the kotel, outside the walls. A kadosh who can come and influence a person and in protect a person on the physical level. That is the outermost level of protection Hashem can have with a person that's connected to Him, right? The most. Uh, The, the most outer layer, the most superficial layer of Ashgaha a person can have is the physical Ashgaha. But there is Mashgiach Mina Halonot. Mashgiach, Mashgiach, what's a Mashgiach? Somebody that's looking, right? Oh. That's overlooking things, that's uh, making sure things are okay. He says, what is it? What is it? He says he's, he's caring for the nefesh. Now you're inside the house. <laughs> When you look through the window, you're paying attention at what's going on inside. So you now, Hashem is not only mashgiach, not only takes care of the body, but he also takes care of the nefesh. The nefesh to make sure that the person is uh, emotionally okay, that he's mentally stable, emotionally stable, happy, not too sad, not too troubled, not too confused. Now it's inside the house. His ruach, right? The, the nefesh, the ruach of a person. That's already a, a deeper connection with HaKadosh Baruch. Mitzitz mina harakim, very different pshat than the gaon. The gaon says it's looking through this little hole, right? Mitzitz, through this little hole, through the, the, the cracks of the house, inside the house. The Malbim says no. Mitzitz mina harakim, meaning he finds the, 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 the Ashgara finds its way even through the harakim, even through the, the, those, those little cracks and breaks through and puts its head inside. This is the neshama. This is already Hashem being one, being davuk, being connected to, to a man. So you have the superficial, the superficial uh, protection of the body. Then you have the emotional, intellectual protection. Hashem makes he lives within you. He lives within you. He lives within you by making sure that you're emotionally okay, you're intellectually okay. He talks to you intellect, you know. Make sure you're stable mentally and, and emotionally. And finally, he becomes one with you. It says in the hierarchy. He becomes one with you. says, this is Ruach HaKodesh. This is Ruach Nevoah. This is when your thoughts are, you don't think. You think what Hashem thinks. You don't behave. You behave the way Hashem behaves. He says, this is Ishakeni Mineshikot Pihu. That's the level of Ishakeni Mineshikot Pihu. It's almost, almost, if, if you're talking about Wahakodesh, it's almost, it's the face-to-face. -face. 
with uh, being face to face with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So we had two, that is three, plus another three, right? So we have our five, right? Yes. Right. So this, this it says the Malbim here are the different ways, the different ways a person can in, can connect and tap into the bracha that Akadosh Baruch Hu showers upon creation. Or you go and grab it, or you wait for it to come down and you connect to it, or or and, and there's two ways of doing that, right? The two right. that is three, the one that is. Uh, I'm sorry. The last three. How do you? What are you doing in order to 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 achieve those? You increase your kedusha and your connection to Hashem. Got it. Oh. So the, 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 no, but it's very good, very good, very good. So, Akadosh Baruch Hu resides in a person's be life in many different ways, right? Yov say we besari haze eloka. From my flesh, I can see God. If 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 you understand, if you get can get emuna, you can get hizuk, you can have a karatatov, you can say hodul Hashem kitov to Hakadosh Baruch Hu just in realizing how physically you are blessed. Davar atzum, that acknowledgement brings Hakadosh Baruch Hu in your physical aspect of life. Some people, they're never satisfied. They don't think they're tall enough. They don't think they're thin enough. They don't think their house is big enough. They don't think that car is nice enough. They don't think they have this, they don't think, right? So instead of embracing the Beracha, they're, they're, they're uh, crying over what they don't have. Right. So instead of, of, of triggering Akadosh Baruch Hu in, the, in their physical aspect of life, they repulse it because they're they're focusing on the void instead of focusing on what's of, of what's full. Major, by, by the way, major test, major nisayon today, major nisayon. <laughs> but the the approach will dif differentiate whether or not you have beracha and shmira and protection in what you have, or put it at risk because you because you cry over what you don't have. <laughs> Thankful for what you have. Huh? Be thankful for what you have. Yes, thankful, appreciate exactly, exactly. But apparently, it's not so simple today. Apparently, number one. Then, then is the acknowledgement, the acknowledgement, and we saw it in Kohelet a few times. The acknowledgement of the beracha to be emotionally and intellectually stable, not to be emotionally broken, distressed confused, scarred, traumatized, intellectually delayed. All this, all this is big beracha, big, big, big beracha. And essentially, essentially through that, revealing a dvekut, a unity, a connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu in your, in your in your value to the emet that is so tight and so high that you become one with, with the emet, which is your neshama, through the emet you become one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and then that is shakeni min eshikot pim. And at that point, at that point, we have what the Rambam calls, what the Rambam calls uh, uh, can, the, 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 uh, to be inside the cheder. You're inside the 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 the, uh, the door, right? The quarters of the king that we addressed and we spoke about. Beautiful. By the way, it's only once you've accomplished this that you can rise and become a mountain. It's through that work that you become a mountain. You separate from the mundane. Exactly. Beautiful. Am I clear at the end? Thank you. To me, Crystal. Very beautiful, Rob. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So much. Love you. 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 Love you.